that aim. The radar crews are ready, too, to do the timing, the only possible method for timing aircraft at extremely high altitudes. There she goes, a big moment in a history-making flight. Now she's approaching the barrier. The speed of sound at 35,000 feet is 660 miles per hour. The really big moment through the sound barrier, the first time ever in level flight. For the first time, except in dives, a man has flown an airplane faster than the speed of sound. It earned Captain Yeager many honors, and the historic plane, the XS-1, earned a resting place in the Smithsonian Institution. Captain Yeager's feat was only one sign that the jet age and the Air Force had caught up with each other. Despite low budgets, and great technical problems. As rapidly as we could, we were developing modern aircraft like the F-86 Sabre jet, splendidly ready to prove themselves in battle, ready to serve our country by giving new strength to the rising power of the United States Air Force. My name is Everest Bergen. I'm this year's national president for the organization Silver Wings. Uh, our local chapter meets once per week and we discuss a lot of the day-to-day -day operations that we're going to be going about in, for, for the coming time. Um, and this involves our fundraisers, our social events, our service projects, things of that nature. And then additionally, the national staff for Silver Wings will convene once a week, um, a little south of here, at Embry-Riddle Prescott. Uh, and that it talks about much larger scale. You know, what are we doing on a national scale to make sure that everybody's registered on time everybody's paying their dues, where are the problem areas in the country and how can we fix those. Uh, I actually was a prior member of the sister organization of Silver Wings, which is called Arnold Air Society. Um, I left Arnold Air Society but wanted to stay involved in that community and Silver Wings provided me an excellent way to do that in addition to developing myself um, in terms of leadership and professional development. Uh, working with, the, uh, with ROTC and with the Air Force is one of the key tenets of what Silver Wings is. Um, we interact a lot with our, our local ROTC detachments and our local units, as well as with our local Arnold Air Society squadrons, which are um, clubs made up of ROTC cadets. I am currently the Chapter Squadron Chief of Protocol, which means I work uh, to kind of bridge the gap between our local Silver Wings chapter and our local Arnold Air Society squadron. Uh, well, we have a lot of projects going on on the national level as well as the local level. On the national level, uh, each year, we, as two organizations, perform what's called our Joint National Project. And that's a big nationwide fundraiser that the whole, whole organization works for. Uh, this year, it's natural disaster prevention and relief. We focus a lot on uh, preparation for natural disasters, as well as providing relief to things like Hurricane Florence. The SNP is our signature national project. Unlike the JNP, which is between Arnold Air Society and Silver Wings, the SNP is specific to Silver Wings. And this year, it focuses on mental health. Our Silver Wings chapter works in close conjunction with the American Legion as well as the Food Bank and Women's Shelter up here to help out our local community. With the American Legion, we sometimes host bingo fundraisers. Uh, they have bingo at night and then we, we sell food on the side. Additionally, um, we help in whatever service projects they may be uh, um, implementing. For example, we have Halloween coming up and they often throw a, a children's fundraiser, kind of a costume party there, and Silver Wings definitely helps out in conjunction with that. ARCON is a convention that happens in each area region in the fall. For example, we are in area region 10, so everybody in our region, which is Arizona, Nevada, some of Utah, New Mexico, and Southern California, will come together once a semester for a convention. And this mostly involves uh, kind of the, the regional business that's going on. What decisions need to be made on a legislative scale that can help in the, in the success of our, our area region? And then every year in the spring, um, we convene the National Conclave, NATCON. And this is where all of the cadets from Arnold Air Society and the cadets and civilians from Silver Wings will come together in one group and talk about the legislative issues on a national level. Control of this tactical force was centralized for the first time under the newly formed General Headquarters, Air Force. In the interests of scientific research, an historic balloon flight was made on Armistice Day, November 11, 1935, 
from the Strato Bowl in South Dakota. Piloted by Captains Albert Stevens and Orville Anderson, the world's largest balloon reached the greatest height man had so far attained, 14 miles. They landed after eight hours and brought back valuable knowledge on weather, cosmic rays, radio, and mapping, a profitable scientific expedition. President Roosevelt said, I should like to see this nation geared to the ability to turn out at least 50,000 planes a year. This meant speeding up from 2,000 planes a year to more than 4,000 planes a month. Many said it was impossible, but American industry rose to the challenge. This past weekend, our chapter attended ARCON. It's the Area Region Conclave for Arnold Air Society and Silver Wings. It was held uh, Friday to uh, Sunday, so 12 to 14 October. Um, and it's generally where we get together as a region, you know, really the southwest U.S., uh, to talk about some legislative issues, vote in our leadership for the coming year, um, and really develop on the skills that we're going to use throughout, through the coming year. You usually carpool with people you don't really interact with a whole lot. Um, so I was able to, to develop some of the connections of the people who I see every week and really had never um, gotten to know them as, as intimately as he did in a two-hour car ride. Sleeping arrangements and accommodations are generally made by the Archon Commander, um, and he will, you know, way ahead of time work out what hotel we're staying at, what conference rooms we're using, and what venue we're using for the banquet. Um, at this Archon, we stayed at uh, some big fancy, well, I wouldn't say fancy, some big resort in, in Prescott. Um, had all of our meetings at Embry-Riddle University, uh, and then had our banquet at some, um, an old hotel down, downtown. There are some hikes, some, um, you know, going out to restaurants and stuff. Arnold Air Society will bring all the candidates together for one big, like, military training session. Um, Saturday morning, bright and early, we start with the legislative stuff. Um, there's always, you know, new, new strategies and new tactics that um, area and region staff want to try out. So this is how they relay that to the region so that they can be implemented at the lowest level. As the day goes on, we go through some leadership training, um, vote in some of our coming leadership, um, and it's followed and concluded on Saturday night with a big fancy uh, military style banquet. How would you explain the networking opportunities that the uh, Archons have to offer? Well it's fantastic. You end up seeing a lot of people that you only see once or twice a year from other chapters. Um, it's the only time we as, as a chapter get to engage with our region. Um, so we'll talk to all of our old friends down at the U of A who we saw at Archon last year um, and we'll, we'll interact with them and, and you know, figure out what they're up to and those connections really pay off in the future when you need a job and the guy you knew from the U of A works at Raytheon. By nature of being an aeronautical university, Embry-Riddle has a very, very strong military nature and because of that they have a huge Silver Wings chapter. So the most impressive part about Embry-Riddle's chapter down there is uh, probably their manpower. They have 80 to 90 members while most other chapters in the country have 20 to 30. Well, the largest takeaway, obviously, is uh, who is our incoming leadership? Who is going to be responsible for us and lead us in the coming year? And for us, we were fortunate enough that, that was our own Sabrina Hersey from our chapter up here at NAU. So starting at NatCon in the spring, uh, she will be overseeing all Silver Wings operations in the southwest U.S. Our area commander uh, for our Arnold Air Society will be from Embry-Riddle um, in Prescott. So that, that's pretty typical. They also have a large Arnold Air Society chapter because they're an aeronautical university, so they hold a lot of those leadership positions. And the next year's ARCON will be in Phoenix, held by the chapter uh, down at ASU. This has been an excellent bonding experience for the members of our chapter. Uh, ARCON and NATCON are arguably the best parts of Arnold Air and Silver Wings, and getting to go and, and especially getting to see it done well it is just really rewarding. The Air Force's first supersonic fighter now adapted for ocean-spanning missions. 16 Republic Aircraft F-84F Thunderstreak fighter bombers, equally at home fighting air-to-air -air or on ground strafing or bombing missions. Four RF-84F photo reconnaissance planes, a long-nosed Thunderstreak. It performs at high and low altitudes, capable of 24-hour camera duty. Four Douglas B-66 tactical bombers, Twin jet near supersonic additions to tank. Built to carry nuclear weapons far, fast, and in any kind of weather. High above the Atlantic, the fighter pilot's world consists of his cockpit, surrounded by only two elements, sky and water, as far as all horizons. 
Of course, there's always enough fuel to make land safely, but miss that refueling rendezvous, and though you may be safe, you're out of the mission. At altitude, the tankers begin a long, slow circle, waiting for their customers. Scanner, we should be getting a call from the jets any minute. Unreal the drogues. Becoming national president for Silver Wings has absolutely bettered my life and, and improved me dramatically uh, in terms of professional development and leadership. I've been afforded a lot of opportunities to organize operations on a national scale that I would not have been able to, to have access to otherwise. And it's really been a blessing and a curse. Civilians are absolutely welcome to join the organization. Silver Wings is primarily a civilian organization that focuses on people who are interested in developing their leadership, their professional development, and uh, working in conjunction with the military. We have an upcoming food drive held by our local chapter that's going to benefit the homeless shelter here in Flagstaff. Our goal is to raise $100 worth of food um, between our Arnold Air Society squadron and our Silver Wings chapter. And the best way to do that is to get in contact with somebody from our local Silver Wings chapter. For social media, uh, our national hashtag this year is hashtag earn your silver wings. Uh, and this is what we post and attach to all of our Silver Wings posts coming from Archon or Natcon or chapter meetings or fundraising events or service events or whatever we happen to be doing. And getting in touch with somebody posting that is always going to be a, a good way to get into the Silver Wings community and look at joining that club. Angels 14, over. Thank you, Hobo. We're starting our letdown. Powers Magpie 2, I have a tally ho, 1130, level, way out. Scanner to pilot, I have the chicks in view. Powers lead to individual flights. Switch to refueling frequency and proceed to your tanker. from Magpie 3. We're all set for a hookup. Roger, Magpie. Camp Hobo 3 ready. Drogues are wet. Magpie, you have good contact and are taking fuel. In a matter of hours, these planes can drop an atom bomb any place on Earth.